Hello and welcome. This is Margaret Moore, also known as Coach Meg. Today, I'm going to deliver a webinar on the topic of taming your frenzy. This topic is featured and was inspired by the book I co-authored with Paul Hammerness. It's a Harvard Health book called Organize Your Mind, Organize Your Life. And we have identified six rules of order for organizing your mind. And the first one is to tame your frenzy. So this webinar builds on the chapter in the book, Organize Your Mind, and takes it to the next stage so that you can coach yourself effectively to tame your own frenzy. So why would we want to tame our frenzy? If we want our brains to change, if we want to learn, if we want to adapt, if we want to bounce back from from all of the ups and downs of life, then we need to get into a place where we're able to calm and tame our frenzy. This photo with the man's head and all the all the nails um, sticking out is what most of us um, feel like, at least some of the time, kind of almost like we've got a hive of bees buzzing around our heads, just to mix metaphors, you know, where we just seem to be walking around in a cloud of frenzied emotions. Now, the opposite of this state is what you might call a calm, positive, energetic mind. And this mental state reminds me of time I spent in uh, Kyoto about um, a couple of years back in a Japanese Zen garden. And here's a picture of the garden. And when you sit in this place, it's amazing how it brings a calm, positive, energetic state of mind. And why does this matter? Our brains learn by making new connections, connecting one neuron to another, new insights, new ideas. And this process is impaired by negative frenzy. The process of going from insight to action, insight to action, which leads us to new possibilities, new change, new learning, new growth. And that process can't happen if we are surrounded by a hive of buzzing bees. So given that our goal here as human beings is to develop new brain networks that allow us to grow and evolve and get more wise and more mature as, as human beings, we need to be able to set the ideal conditions for this to happen. So in our book, we propose the concept of really sweeping your brain clean first so that it has the ideal conditions to learn. So it has a purpose. The purpose of taming your frenzy is to put your brain in the best possible state so that you can grow and learn at your best possible rate as a human being. In the book, we talk about other rules of order that are enabled by a clean and calm brain. We're able to get above the forest to the big picture. We're able to focus our brain's resources, which is where we learn and make new connections. We're able to access and harness our memory. We are forgetful in a frenzied state. We're able to have leaps of insight. We connect the dots in new ways. We get to a place where we're wise and strategic. So let's talk about what frenzy is in the brain. At its simplest, its biology is all about negative emotions sourced from the limbic system, which processes our emotions. They arise from below, they rise up, and they intrude and impair the functioning of the prefrontal cortex, the red part in this picture. That's our thinking brain. Basically, the connection between our emotions and our thinking brain, the negative ones actually, really dim the lights and make it hard for us to think straight. They take our thinking brain offline, and so we start uh, operating from an automatic pilot point of view, and who knows where our unconscious brain will take us. Inside frenzy comes in many shapes, sizes, and colors, and each of us has experience with our own particular pattern of frenzy. It could be overwhelm, worry, anxiety, sadness 
frustration, irritability, impatience, anger, or just simply fatigue. One of the most potent sources of frenzy is from within, our inner critics, the voices who say to us, I'm not blah, blah, blah enough, good enough, smart enough, fast enough, strong enough, wise enough, confident enough. And that frenzy is paralyzing. It's particularly harsh. We're particularly harsh to ourselves. So noticing this inner critic phenomenon is very important in terms of appreciating the impact of frenzy on your brain. I've been working on a journey to understand my inner psyche via the work of Dick Schwartz at selfleadership.org. And I've come to appreciate that my frenzy arises from a whole inner family of different parts of my personality and psyche that drive my life. And when I'm in a state of mindful self, I'm calm, connected, centered, open, wise, strong. And being in that place, just calming the rest of the frenzy, being in that place of self, of spiritual self, is a place where the frenzy is calmed, if just for a few moments. I have a boss part. You might call her Queen Margaret, who gets anxious when I don't get things done. My coach part gets exasperated when others don't do what I hope they would do. My independent part gets angry when something gets in my way. My confident part gets sad when I feel I'm underestimating myself or someone else's. My adventurer gets panicky when there are opportunities that might be missed. My glider who wants to look good gets frustrated when things get in the way of looking good. My creative part gets overwhelmed because the boss pushes it too hard. And my body that carries all of this gets tired and gets fatigued. And so I've come to appreciate that each emotional state is coming from a different part of my emotional system. And this has helped me enormously in taming my own frenzy. So this is work you might want to consider too. I should say that each of these parts also has positive emotions, but that's not the purpose of today's webinar. Then we have outside frenzy, which of course then triggers the inside frenzy. And we all have different ways of reacting, our reactivity to outside frenzy. Sometimes people can sit in a mess that you see in this picture and stay calm. I've known academics who have offices that look a little bit like this, and they just seem to be able to carry on, <laughs> keeping calm and carrying on, as they say. Whereas I am very highly reactive to a mess around me and clutter around me most of the time. So considering how the outside frenzy is impacting your inner frenzy is also invaluable. So bottom line is that frenzy, like this uh, TV screen, the static, it causes this low signal to noise ratio, lots of noise, and so we can't see the signal. We're not getting clear. We can't think straight. And from the brain's perspective, it doesn't really matter what kind of frenzy, it all dims the lights, whether it's inside or outside, whether it's big or small. From a biological standpoint, it's all equal. It just impairs our ability to think straight. Now, on the other hand, positive emotions do exactly the opposite. They improve our brain's ability to focus and learn. We're more open-minded and flexible and creative and adaptable. We see more of uh, peripheral vision. We see the big picture. So that is one way of getting out from under the frenzy. So what do you do? How do you tame your frenzy? As Carl Jung said, what you resist persists. Your frenzy is a part of your being. It's a part of your brain. By pushing it away, it will just get noisier. It will just get more demanding. It will just make more noise. And so it's so important to stop and just feel a sense of acceptance. This is where I'm at. This is the frenzied state that goes with where I'm at. And it is what it is. To accept allows the frenzy, just in the acceptance, can make an enormous difference. 
want to see your frenzied emotions as messengers. They're your friends. They have something to tell you. You may not be in a place to listen to them right now, but they have a message for us. And so it's important to welcome them, to listen to what they have to say, to appreciate them, to feel compassion, to simply accept that this is the way it is. And when you do that, that when your frenzied emotions feel listened to, they will in fact loosen their hold on your mental state. When you turn your inner critic into your inner friend, you calm its harsh angry, upset voice. In a way, our emotions really just want to connect with us. They want us to appreciate them. They want us to love them. They want, to, they want their messages to be heard. And there is a time and place for hearing them. It's not when it's time to learn and focus. So you want to really engage with your emotions and say, I will come back to you. We'll journal. Um, I'll get help. I'll talk it through with someone else. I won't ignore you down the road. But what I'm really asking for now is that you allow me to carry on with what's important in the moment. So when it is time for the brain to learn, just simply naming and accepting, affirming the emotion is a, a simple way forward. And there's a little study that shows that when you name an emotion, when you give it language, the prefrontal cortex connects with it, acknowledges it, and is able to set it aside. It's able to let it go for just a moment. Like a child that's crying, your emotion is asking for attention. So just gently stop and name the negative emotion. And that in itself may lift it and allow you to continue without its depleting your brain's resources. Now then there's an opportunity to do deeper work, to appreciate the sources of your frenzy to activate your inner Sherlock Holmes. Notice when your emotional state is agitated and edgy. When are you most calm? When are you most frenzied? What brings on your calm state? Where is the frenzy coming from? Is it long-standing internal sources, old traumas that haven't been healed? Is it inner family members, as I've discovered in my journey, uh, in understanding the forces driving my, my psyche? Or it could be big sources of external frenzy, you know, your job, your boss, your commute, your home setting, your relationships. Those all bear some close examination, and it may well be that some of those need to be addressed for the general level of frenzy to come down in one's life. In the world of cognitive behavioral therapy, there's a concept called appraising one's emotions to kind of bring your thinking brain online. You know, accept and affirm the emotion. It's real. It has a message. And then ask, uh, is it really a valid one? Are you overreacting? I remember well when my stepson, when he was a teenager and at home, he's now through college, but those years at home, I would get into quite a frenzied state when I saw his bedroom, you know, it's teenager, especially boys seem to live like barbarians. And boy, did that trigger me. And, you know, my husband helped me think, appraise this reaction. You know, was it, did it really matter that his room was a mess? He'd be gone soon. You know, what mattered more, my relationship with him or getting angry at the mess? And so I engaged my thinking brain to consider that, that I was probably overreacting and that I could, in fact, accept the frenzy and then let it go in service of a bigger intention, which was to have a good relationship with him, which I do, that resulted from me not being in this negative state when I was relating to him and really focusing more on the good aspects of him as a human being. One of the other major areas for me in terms of appraisal is to learn, and this really came out of writing the Organize Your Mind book, that one of my biggest sources of frenzy is overwhelm because I, I'm responsible for this. I have a very full plate. I have put everything on that plate. I have no boss. I have no one to blame but myself. And so I have a choice every day. Do I look at you know a spreadsheet full of to-dos on all my projects or do I simply just look at the few things I want to focus on getting done today? 
if I allow myself to fall down the uh, the canyon into the overwhelm place, oh, woe is me. I have too much to do. I'll never get it done. How am I ever going to get everything done? How am I blah, 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 blah. I can turn myself into a frenzied mess in a few seconds. And so I've really had to learn that overwhelm is a choice. I don't have to connect with all the things I have to do, that I need to acknowledge that I always get things done, almost always anyway. They get done well. They get done when they need to get done. I rarely let people down, and therefore it is a choice, and I can choose to be settled and calm in the moment. Uh, just appreciating that when I'm in a calm place, I'm more productive, I will get more done. And in fact, overwhelm is actually counterproductive. So this has been an important place for appraisal for me. It may or may not be your trailhead at this point. And as I mentioned, increasing positive emotions is a great way to tame one's frenzy because the brain can't hold a positive emotion and a negative emotion simultaneously. And so wherever you want to focus, we go into this in great detail in the positivity webinar. You can think about the past, being grateful, forgiving yourself and others, looking for silver linings rather than focusing on what went wrong and what doors closed in your face. Think about how to make the present better, to savor the good, to be in flow, to be purposeful and intentional, to really connect meaningfully to the people that you care about. And then, just as important, building a good relationship with the future around your hope for the future, your optimism, and your vision. So these are great ways to improve frenzy just by shifting to the positive on its own account. Another great way to tame frenzy is to engage your body, your heart, your lungs, your muscles. It turns out that when you calm your heart through exercise and meditation and other means of calming your body, that you get the benefit of calming your brain too. So you improve your heart rate, you calm your blood pressure, and your attention improves, your focus improves, your creativity and your memory all improve too. So the calm and the exercise body is also vital for calming the brain. So if you're not doing these already, you might want to try exercising or meditating or under other moments of mindfulness, pausing in life, savoring, just breathing, deep breathing, um, or use sleep or, or moments of relaxation to recharge. One of my most powerful ways to tame my frenzy is to listen to music I love. It's amazing how music in an instant shifts our mindset, helps us handle our emotions in a powerful way. What's my formula for taming my frenzy? As I mentioned, one big area to work for me was to shift my relationship to my overwhelm because I can use overwhelm in a flash to make my brain frenzied. A second one I've learned from this book is to take more brain breaks because the frenzy builds and builds and builds. And if I don't take a break every hour or so, then it gets harder and harder to keep my thinking brain on top of things. I have relied on exercise for, gosh, 38 years to calm my brain, long before I knew about mindfulness and all of these other things. And so exercise has been a key to my taming my frenzy for a very long time. I recently started a meditation that worked for me that I loved and could sustain. And uh, if you're interested, it's at my Coach Meg website uh, under the Organize Your Mind section on the mindfulness page, what I call the Galliano meditation because I learned it on Galliano Island off the coast of Vancouver Island. And uh, it's been something that I do almost every morning. Rarely do I miss doing this 10-minute meditation, and it washes my brain clean of frenzy. It's, a, it's an amazing experience. I use music, uh, in particular jazz, but also classical, not so much pop music, and it does shift my mind rapidly into a, a calmer place. I often have a long runway in the morning. I putter slowly. I just hang out with my husband. I often get up at 5 a.m. even if I don't have meetings right away because that puttering time really allows me to put all my emotions in their right spots. 
I really enjoy sleeping, and I love taking my waking slow, uh, waking and just entering the day in a slow way rather than jumping out of the bed um, with an alarm, which, of course, many days I have to do that. But when I don't, I really enjoy that those morning, those morning moments of just letting my mind wander. My internal family system sessions, um, I've done a dozen of them and more to come, have really, really helped me welcome to listen and accept my various negative emotions and to understand where they come from and why. And so that I can kind of, uh, they have a code, you know, I know which emotion is speaking and why. And I understand what it's needing. Not all the time, but I'm gradually learning to appreciate each for its own message. Another thing I'm doing in the future is I'm planning to learn how to drum, to take drumming lessons. Um, music, actually playing music, performing music, is a wonderful way for brain integration and uh, another, uh, I think, possibility for taming frenzy. So in summary, here are some tips. First, define what it means to be in a calm mindset for you. Really create a vision for what that looks like so you know where you're trying to get to. Start when you greet your negative emotions with acceptance. Just appreciate that they are messengers. There's nothing wrong with them. If you resist them, they'll persist. So just take a moment and accept and appreciate them. Name them, affirm them, and that will help you let go of them in the moment. The deeper work is to accept and appraise their validity. Maybe there's another way of thinking about it. It took me a while to rethink my approach to overwhelm and to come up with uh, a strategy that works for me most of the time. See your inner critics as your inner friends. They have some gifts. Behind the critic are strengths. Savor the good things in life. Just a few moments of savoring can put you into a calmer mindset. Use your body to calm your mind and listen to music that calms your mind. And on that front, our choice of music for this webinar is a piece, it's one of the few pieces I can still play on the piano, is uh, from Glenn Gould. He's a Canadian pianist, uh, a very unique and special man. And his Bach Prelude in C major performance is so profound. It's actually been taken into space and left there as an example of uh, the height of human achievement. You can get it at YouTube at this link. Your pre-class homework then is to be a student of your calm level and rate yourself on a, on a scale of 10 every few hours for two days. And just stop and journal and notice what are the themes what creates calm? What creates frenzy in this moment? And from there, begin to list the main sources of calm and frenzy. So you just get a sense for this inner dynamic. And then experiment with a new way to tame your frenzy for two days. And this, these are experiments you can continue, but just get into the mode of trying out something new. Then after our class, it's important to capture all of your learning on a Facebook group or in your journal so that you can really make the most of this important topic around taming your frenzy. That's all for today. Thank you for listening to this webinar on Taming Your Frenzy. Onward and Upward from Margaret Moore, also known as Coach Meg.